Hi everyone, Matt here from GI Energy. Today we're just going to be looking at a few different battery brands that are available in the market. What we've found to be most popular this year, as we've seen a huge increase in the popularity and the inquiries for batteries, both with existing customers that have solar that want to add a battery to their system and new clients that want to add solar and batteries together. So we'll run through a couple of the different options that we've been installing. Uh, we've been installing a lot of SunGrow, BYD, Tesla and Sonnen, plus a few other options that are out in the market, the pros and cons of each, the clients that they suit depending on their requirements and um, some monitored examples of some systems that we have in our network. So first we'll have a look at SunGrow and we've got some monitoring on a site here that we'll look at. So we've got a day here with really good solar generation just to give a really good idea of how the system will perform on a perfect day. The system on the 2nd of August generated 33 kilowatt hours of solar and this client here has a 13 kilowatt system with Q-cells panels running through a 10 kilowatt SunGrow hybrid three phase inverter and 25 kilowatt hours of SunGrow storage. So they've chosen to max out that stack completely and this particular client is actually going to add some additional panels and some storage just to cover their load. So on this particular day, the demand on their site was 41.6 kilowatt hours. And as you can see from the graph, their self-sufficiency was 34.5 kilowatt hours. So just shy of 83% self-sufficient. From the graph itself, we can see the solar generation curve have a slow increase in the morning, big kick around 9 a.m. and then plateau out through the day. From this time here, you can also see where the load is covered from the, from the battery itself with the excess flowing into the battery and an occasional peak and trough where the demand actually increased and the client actually accessed a little bit of their storage around 10.30 a.m. And then from that point onwards, just continuing throughout the day. As we move into the evening, obviously when the PV generation has ceased for the day, we can see their load fully covered from that battery. So there's even a peak there very intermittently around, uh, around 20 past six, where over nine kilowatts of power was supplied from that battery. That then moves through the night and around midnight 1 a.m., the battery was empty and then they've obviously gone back to grid power at that time. So they have a swimming pool, they have a spa, they have reverse cycle, so they were using that for heating and they're about to purchase an electric car. So some pretty, uh, pretty uh, power hungry appliances that are in place there, but ultimately this, this client just wanted a solution to cover as much of their usage as they possibly could. So why do we recommend SunGrow? And why did this particular client choose SunGrow for their home? So we've installed SunGrow inverters now for over seven years. They've become the leading uh, or, or most installed inverter in Australia over the past couple of years. And they just represent excellent value for money and they've also now released their own range of batteries in this new generation. So one thing that we really love about that is because it's the same inverter manufacturer and battery manufacturer, they work in harmony together. It's not two separate manufacturers that if there might be a comms issue or something that needs to be looked at in the battery but not the inverter, we then potentially have to contact two separate manufacturers to get the right information. It's just all done through SunGrow. So it keeps it simple for us, keeps it simple for the installation, and more importantly, keeps it simple for the end user. So everything just works in that monitoring perfectly that we looked at before. The SunGrow battery is also stackable. So what that means is it's modular. So you can come, start off with 9.6 kilowatt hours of storage, and you can build that over time. So you can build it in blocks of 3.2 kilowatt hours. So we look at your home's current load, what your future needs might be, and in a lot of instances, we do start with 9.6 or 12.8 kilowatt hours and then gather some more data. Come back, we can then look at how much power you're consuming, how much has gone back to the grid, and if it's feasible to add more storage at this time. So moving forward in the future, just a really simple way of allowing your system to grow with your energy needs on site. Some grow batteries are a high voltage battery so with that hybrid inverter, they just pair perfectly together. The monitoring will run everything, so you'll be able to see your generation, your consumption, your state of charge, and um, obviously anything that's being fed back to the grid that's left over. 
The other thing that we can do with a SunGrow inverter and battery is supply some essential backup to your home. In most instances with 9.6 kilowatt hours of storage, we'll generally look at a couple of circuits, so maybe a lighting circuit, a power point for your fridge and freezer, a power point for, for your modem, but ultimately discuss with you directly what your requirements are and what you expect to have backed up in the case of a, of a blackout or a brownout so that you can keep those essentials running at that time. If the blackout occurs during the day and there's some solar generation, we can obviously then have the system still running so it can fill the battery and obviously then you can use that as well. You've also got the option there to choose a state of charge level on the battery. So if you want to set a buffer of 50% for argument's sake, if, if blackouts are pretty common, you can make sure that that battery only drains to 50% every day then you've got that amount retained just in case that should happen. If blackouts are pretty rare or not a concern that you have, you can have that room completely empty and then it can just do another charge the next morning and then discharge again and, and so forth. SunGrow for us has become the most popular battery we, we've installed by far. It's cost effective, so in relation to the other batteries that we supply, it's, it provides excellent value for money. As I mentioned before, it's modular, you can do backup, and ultimately, because it's that all-in-one solution, it's proved really, really popular. Any drawbacks on the SunGrow battery? Pretty few and far between, realistically. Um, I'd probably say, ultimately, a lot of our clients might choose another brand because it's, it's better known, or it's been around longer, or their market share is perceived to be, be higher. But realistically, in terms of where they sit, both of their inverter and their battery, they're pretty much in that sweet spot of, of price and quality. So overall, for the SunGrow solution, we're going to give that a 9 out of 10. As we mentioned before, price point is pretty much spot on. Good backup, modular, pretty much ticks every box that you need. The next battery that we're going to look at is BYD. That can actually be paired with the SunGrow inverter as well. We more commonly pair that with the Fronius Gen 24 inverter that's now obviously a very popular solution on the market. So. The Fronius inverter is pretty well known. I won't go into a ton of detail about that. We've got some other videos about it, but Fronius is universally recognized as the best string inverter that's available. It's European made. They've been in business since 1945. And the Gen 24 hybrid model of their inverter has been out for quite a while now. And they've decided to partner directly with BYD, which are one of the largest companies that are supplying storage and, and also electric cars. So we've got an example of a monitored site with Fronius BYD. This client actually installed a system with us back in 2017 using the Fronius Simo inverter. They've recently installed a second system now with the Gen 24 Simo 6 and BYD storage. So let's have a look at that monitoring. So this particular site here has 11 kilowatt hours of BYD storage, which can be scaled up to 22 kilowatt hours. So on this example here, we've got a beautiful morning of solar production, as you can see from the steady, steady curve there and then a slightly overcast afternoon with intermittent sun. So what I really love about the Fronius monitoring is just how detailed it is, the colors that work as well, that are really easy to interpret. So starting off, you've got your green line here, which is the state of charge of the battery. So you can see from, mid from, uh, from midnight all the way through till about 8.30 a.m., the battery was at 7% charge. So this client's chosen to consume 93% of their battery each day and allow it to cycle with just a very small buffer in case there is a blackout. So at 8.30, once the consumption on site has leveled out with the production, the battery begins to fill up. And by midday, that battery is completely full. So within three hours, three and a half hours, the battery's gone from 7% state of charge all the way to 100%. At that point in the day, the excess power that's available, that's being produced, is now going back to the grid, which is the gray shaded area that you can see here. And then what you can actually see with the battery state of charge is just some slight peaks and troughs. So you can see a little bit of that battery was used around midday, a little bit again around one in the afternoon and then two in the afternoon, and then finally around four. So this is a, a thing that isn't really considered that frequently with batteries. It's always thought of that the battery is purely supplying the home at night. Whereas during the day, when we do have some intermittent cloud, we can actually allow the home load to be supplied by solar, whatever's available. And if the load is, is higher than the PV generation, 
some storage. So you sort of see a slight peak and trough through the day. That's very common with a lot of these systems, which just means that as, as frequently as possible, we're self-sufficient from the system. So continuing on with this particular day here, you can see by around four, 4.30, then five o'clock, solar PV generation finishes off for the day. And then obviously it's, it's dark. And then we start to see the state of charge reduce. So this client here has a really high demand for a very short window around six o'clock, drops back down, and then around 6.30, 7 o'clock picks up again for a more continued period to around 8, 8 p.m. So on this particular day, with reverse cycle heating on, oven, whatever else may have been used in the home, by about 8.30, this system, the, the battery state of charge has reached 7%. So 10 kilowatt hours of storage has been consumed on site. So everything that was available pretty much other than that buffer has been taken by 9 p.m. So what we can do here, and a discussion that we've had with the client was, we look at the data over, over time. This is a winter example. So at this time of year, your PV generation is much lower. You've got that demand for heating if you're using it. We can work together to determine whether more storage should be installed and when the time is right to do that. So this client I know very well personally is actually in, um, waiting on a purchase of an electric vehicle later this year. So at that point, we can then look at this all together again to see how they're able to charge their car. And because they have that power that's returned to the grid in that gray shaded area, we know that that can fill the battery and be used. They could also consider installing a Fronius Watt Pilot, which is an EV charger that works purely from excess energy. So after your battery's full, it can then send power directly to your EV in that instance. So the question that we get, get asked a lot is why, why Fronius with BYD? So Fronius inverter, as I mentioned before, is universally known and regarded as the best inverter you can get. BYD storage, very similar to others in the market, is it's modular. So you can start with 11 kilowatt hours in the HVM, which is the, the mid-size one, or you can start with the smaller version, which is 5.12 kilowatt hours. The HVM is the more common one that we install here because it obviously gives you a reasonable amount of storage. You can then scale that in 2.76 kilowatt hour blocks up to 19 or 22 kilowatt hours, depending on if you've got single or three phase power at home before you start another stack and you can do three stacks together. So you can potentially have 57 or 66 kilowatt hours of storage if you've got enough, uh, enough panels to fill that battery and obviously give you what you need in the day. We've also got a really good backup supply that's available with Fronius BYD. So we've got an example here that you can see where we've backed up some essential circuits on the left-hand side and then on the right-hand side, non-essential circuits. So we run through together what you deem essential in your home. Here we've got some lights, a modem, a power point for a fridge and a shed. So this client wanted their whole shed backed up for power just in case that, that does occur on site. We've then got the non-essential loads that we've obviously removed. So all the essentials, we just got relays and contactors that work to do that without any um, anything that you need to do. It just works automatically if there's a blackout. Fronius and BYD, I guess, if you're looking at any, any downside, the only thing maybe there is that they're a little bit more expensive than some of their counterparts. But again, that's pretty much the extra that you're paying for the quality there. Um, other than that, it's pretty much a really good solution for anyone that's looking to add a second system, particularly if, particularly if they've already got a Fronius inverter or start fresh with the inverter panels and storage, not to mention some of the pretty cool things that Fronius are releasing uh, for, for EVs as well and what you can build into their monitoring. So overall, the BYD and Fronius solution, we'd give a 8.5 out of 10. The next battery we're gonna have a look at is the Sonnen battery. So Sonnen have been around for over 10 years now making batteries. They're on their 10th generation, which is the new Sonnen Evo. So they make two different products. They do the Sonnen Evo, that's an AC coupled battery. So that's something that you can pair with your existing inverter if you've got a Fronius or a Sungro or whatever it might be. And they also make a Sonnen Hybrid 9.53, which is an all-in-one solution. So you've got your inverter, you've got your batteries as well that you can stack over time. So Sonnen are manufactured in Adelaide, South Australia. Quite well known now for um, obviously being an Aussie made product and they're actually owned by Shell. So one of the biggest conglomerates in the world. 
So for full disclosure, I actually have a Sonnen Evo battery installed at my home. Uh, that was installed last October. The Sonnen cycle warranty is 10,000 cycles or 10 years. So by far the greatest, if we're going purely off cycles of, of any battery available. In 10 months, I've cycled that battery 206 times. So just shy of about 0.9 cycles per day. So if I work off that, that battery is gonna last me a long, long time in the home, depending on obviously how our, uh, how our needs adjust. The battery's 10 kilowatt hour, full usable, so you can drain that to complete zero. You can also add a buffer of five, 10, 15, 20%, whatever you need for backup if there is a blackout. The backup circuits that are most frequently installed are a power point for your fridge or freezer, a lighting circuit, possibly a modem, but ultimately, again, that's something that we discuss with you to determine what's, what's needed there. So it can't back up your whole home. So you can't back up uh, an air conditioner or uh, an oven or something that's obviously gonna consume a lot of power, but it can back up what most would deem essential if that does occur. It's probably a little bit more expensive per kilowatt hour than other batteries that are available in Australia, but ultimately because of that warranty, for the time in business and being an Australian manufactured product, it ticks a lot of boxes there. We've got a monitored example of the battery here. What's quite cool about Sonnen is you can actually look at a monitored example across 36 hours. So you can see from midnight through the full day, through the next night, and then for the system to begin charging again. So in this particular example, we've got the state of charge level, which is the green line. You can see that around about 7, 7.30 a.m. when the system begins generating power, there's still about 40% of the battery left in this home. So this home isn't a, isn't a massive user. They've got their hot water set up through the day, then they've got some intermittent spikes for some other power. And you can see through the night that everything in that home has been completely covered by solar and battery, sorry. So everything in the night has been covered by that battery. And then again, when the next morning starts, they're around 20%. So a bit of a fluctuation from the previous night, but ultimately the batteries run into full charge by about 11 a.m. to midday, which for a winter's day is pretty awesome. And then the house is fully self-sufficient from solar and the battery. So the sun and battery overall, we give a eight out of 10. So the battery that we get the most frequent inquiries about and probably what's most well known in the industry is the Tesla battery. So the Powerwall obviously is now in its second generation. It's a 13 and a half kilowatt hour unit and um, has certainly proven really popular. At the time of filming, the wait time on that battery is anywhere from three to six months. So obviously the demand is really, really high. We install a lot of Tesla batteries for clients that want full backup awesome monitoring and really intuitive controls. So you can actually use that battery for, um, for tariff optimization. So if you're on a time of use rate where you've got a really high peak rate, but a low off peak rate at night, you can actually choose to charge that battery from the grid and then discharge it on your peak tariff and obviously improve the saving through your home. So it's a really intuitive battery that you can use to your advantage. As I mentioned, it can do full backup on a single phase home through the gateway. So anything and everything that you've got there could be backed up if there is a blackout. I'd say you'd still be a little bit <laughs> conservative on maybe running the aircon too much, but that's completely how, how you wanna use it. But ultimately, the reason that we get so many inquiries about it is obviously because it is so well known. It can pair with any inverter that's out there. So for any of sun grow in phase, whatever you have in place, we can come retrospectively come and fit that in you can install a brand new system with the Tesla as well, just with another inverter, and obviously look to complete, completely con control your home's energy requirements. Any negative on the Tesla? It's pretty hard to, to pick one. I guess they're, again, a little bit more expensive per kilowatt hour than some of the modular batteries that are there. If you do want more storage, you have to buy a second unit. So if you go over that need for, for more than 13 kilowatt hours of power, you just put another Tesla power wall in next to it. So I guess there it could run into a little bit more, um, more cost than, than some of the other options that are available. But all in all, we install a lot of them. They're very simple to install, really good monitoring. And overall, we give that an eight out of 10. Another battery we get asked about regularly here is the Alpha ESS. 
It's a AC coupled battery. They also have a hybrid solution, so you could pair it with something that's already in place. It's reasonably new to the market. It's certainly more cost effective than a lot of other products out there. So if you're looking a bit more on a budget and you just want a small amount of storage to start with, could certainly be an option. You can't back up any inductive loads with the Alpha, so a fridge can't be backed up, which for most clients tends to be the first thing that we normally talk about that's, that's obviously needed if that does occur regularly at your home. You can, however, back up some power points, obviously for, for a modem or some lights and um, other basic things like that. Ultimately, based on the fact that Alpha is reasonably new, a bit more sort of on that lower end in terms of the cost, we've given it a, a six out of 10. If they turn out that they're obviously support's good, um, monitoring's good, warranty's good if, if required, possibly something that could be increased over time. At Geo Energy, we installed a lot of LG batteries from as early as 2016. So one of the first uh, suppliers in Australia to start in, installing their Resu product. In 2018 and 2019, we installed a lot of the Resu 6.5 10 kilowatt hour and 13 kilowatt hour units. And they proved to be pretty decent paired with um, a hybrid inverter. The monitoring was good, support was pretty good, and ultimately had a lot of very happy clients that have had that system installed. It's pretty cost effective um, in comparison to some other products out there. Uh, it's not modular, but it can be installed with a second unit. So the new generation now is a seven and a 10 kilowatt hour model. You can add another seven or a 10, obviously to, to your existing setup or we'll start that way as well. It can have some basic backup for essentials like a fridge, like a PowerPoint, um, all installed through, through the inverter. So overall with the LG, it's a good product. They've had a, um, they had a product recall on that Resu model that's been extended um, a couple of times now. Their support has been okay, probably not fantastic through that so because of that we give that a 6.5 again with that new model if that improves from the previous generation and their support turns out to be really good which they've got back to everyone it's probably just been a little bit slower they could maybe improve that as well <laughs>